Coming up on NT Daily News, flu season is at its peak. We'll tell you how you can avoid dealing with the illness. Plus, a Denton liquor store was held at gunpoint. Find out how the suspect was apprehended. And find out how Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School is honoring lives lost on the one year anniversary of the school shooting. From the Mayborn School of Journalism at the University of North Texas, this is NT Daily News. I'm Caroline Clewis. And I'm Darian Clark. NT Daily's Victoria Wickham is here to tell us what health officials say you need to know. Two weeks ago, nearly 300 people tested positive for the flu in Denton County. Epidemiologist Juan Rodriguez says health officials started noticing an increase in the flu since the beginning of the year. The peak of flu season may be here now and might be here to stay. The problem is health officials don't know exactly when the end is in sight. Uh, we're still peaking. We don't know how high it's going to go, how much this longer this will continue. So we want to make sure the community knows that flu season is still here, still occurring, still peaking. We haven't even passed the midpoint yet, in a sense. I'm getting a flu vaccination every year. For everyday preventative measures, Rodriguez says it's best to cover your mouth when coughing, wash your hands, and stay home if you experience flu-like symptoms. A Denton County measles case is the first to be reported in the DFW area during a recent outbreak of the disease. It's the seventh case in, reported in Texas. NT Daily's Aaron Carroll spoke to a doctor and an infant care provider to find out who this can affect and what to do about it. With the recent case of measles reported in Denton County, Dr. Herschel Voorhees explained that unvaccinated individuals are most at risk. He says that anyone who is over the age of 18 and unvaccinated can go to the doctor and vaccinate themselves. If uh, someone is uh, age 18 or over, they can handle their own medical uh, concerns and get vaccinated. In fact, I was reading an article not too long ago about a young man who parents did not want him to be vaccinated as a child and when he turned 18 after he doing his own research about vaccines decided he would get vaccinated. Individuals who are most at risk for the measles are those who have not been vaccinated, especially infants too young to receive the vaccination. Olivia Cable Barber is an infant care provider who expressed her concerns for the newborn infants. If one child isn't vaccinated and there was an outbreak of measles or something and the kid was too young to be vaccinated for that, then he could easily get it and then spread it around the entire class, assuming the other kids are too small as they are to be vaccinated. It could be an outbreak. While there has only been one confirmed measles case in Denton, anyone who isn't vaccinated is still at risk. Adult immunizations for the measles and other preventable diseases are available from the UNT Student Health and Wellness Center. Aaron Carroll, NT Daily. Doctors say anyone who can be vaccinated should be. A Denton man is being held in police custody after committing armed robbery. NT Daily's Mercedes Azeji is live at Rick's Beer Barn. On Tuesday afternoon, an armed man walked through the doors of this liquor store and pointed a gun at the cashier who ran out the back door immediately. As the suspect fled, employees next door at Infinity Tattoo Parlor attempted to chase the man. Police later arrested Justin Wilker and charged him with armed robbery. Police officers and UNT officers worked together to form a perimeter around the area. And after setting up the perimeter, we're able to locate the suspect within that perimeter uh, a short time later and take him into custody. Wilker's bond is set at $50,000. Reporting from Denton, Mercedes is edgy with NT Daily. After biting an officer's ear off, a Denton man was released from jail less than 48 hours after what started as a routine traffic stop. Christopher Rogers was pulled over Friday night on suspension, suspicion of drunk driving near I-35. Police say Rogers refused to get out of his car when asked by officers. Once the officer did get him out, they say Rogers continued to fight them, punching an officer in the face and biting Sergeant Michael Rose's ear off. And they don't happen, you know, as like on a weekly basis, but uh, uh, here recently, you know, we had the officer who was assaulted and his ear was bitten. Sometimes the injuries occur just in the normal course of doing work. You know, we've, we've recently had an officer that uh, possibly broke their wrist in a, in a car crash, uh, just driving around on patrol. Um, so they're not 
frequent, like an everyday thing, but they certainly happen throughout the year. Sergeant Rose is currently at home recovering and is expected to return to light duty soon. More than 300 pastors in the Southern Baptist Church have been accused of sexual misconduct in the past 20 years. Now, as CNN Melanie Torre reports, one pastor in Travis County hopes church leaders will step up to make sure the pattern of abuse comes to an end. I think it's time that we Southern Baptists were kind of jolted into reality. Stephen Washburn, pastor at First Baptist Church Pflugerville, says the pattern of sex abuse in Baptist churches is heartbreaking and frightening. I was shocked. I was surprised by the report. He says it's time for Baptist churches to take more responsibility in protecting their members. At FBC Pflugerville, a sexual harassment policy signed by all paid staff is a commitment that no accusation will go ignored. Staff members and volunteers get a full background check once a year. We do background checks for uh, Sunday school teachers, for Awana leaders, for, uh, we have seven staff pastors. Certainly those guys are looked at, you know, we do, a, we do a deep look at all of them. But he says it shouldn't stop there. It's time for individual churches to talk to each other when it comes to hiring and firing church leaders. We should keep a registry of sexual abuse um, convictions so that any church in uh, Southern Baptist life, if, they, if they're going to hire somebody, they can, I mean, we, we call references. In 1999, Great Hills Baptist Church youth pastor Charles Willits was convicted of multiple counts of indecency with a child. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison and released in 2014. In 2009, former Solid Rock Baptist Church youth pastor Shane Flournoy was sentenced to six years in prison for sexual assault of a minor he met at the Texas School for the Deaf. In 2017, Pastor Ruben Garcia at Betania Baptist Church accepted a plea deal and avoided prison for the sexual assault of a child. Washburn says for too long, some church leaders have behaved above the law. He says pastors should be treated differently but by being held to a higher standard. We should be the example of how to live this life. Um, and if we're not, we don't deserve to hold a position. At this time, 90 pastors are in prison for their crimes and 100 are registered sex offenders. The United States has never had a millennial president, but one 2020 candidate wants to change that. Coming up, find out how an Indiana mayor hopes to make history in more ways than one. Cost of family time activities getting you down? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. If you or someone you know needs a healthy dose of nature, visit discovertheforest.org to find out which park or forest is closest to your family. Acorns are not real currency, but that's okay because parks or forests are either free or super affordable. It's a truly economical way for the whole family to enjoy each other's company and bond beyond the confines of concrete buildings and rush hour. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? B, console her? Don't worry, sweetie. This is gonna happen a lot. Or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice, single boys. <laughs> that was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. 
A moment of silence was held today at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Today marks the one-year anniversary of the day 17 students were killed in the deadliest high school shooting in U.S. history. Since the shooting, the school has been working to better secure the campus. Survivors of the tragedy have toured the country protesting for stricter gun laws. 26 state legislators in Washington, D.C. have passed gun control measures, but the survivors are determined to put an end to all gun violence. The school is now following the tradition of Columbine High School, where school is closed every year for a day of service on the anniversary of the shooting. President Donald Trump is expected to declare a national emergency for border wall as Senate prepares for spending bill vote. CNN's Caitlin Collins has more on the president's most likely course of action. President Trump leaving Washington guessing tonight. We're going to look at the legislation when it comes and uh, I'll make a determination then. Declining to say whether he'll sign the border security spending deal until he's seen the final package. Well, we haven't uh, gotten it yet. We'll be getting it. We'll be looking for landmines because you could have that, you know. Despite claiming earlier this week that Democrats would shoulder the blame for another government shutdown, Trump all but ruling one out today. I don't want to see a shutdown. Shutdown would be a terrible thing. Uh, I think a point was made with the last shutdown. People realized how bad the border is. The president hinting that if he does sign the deal, he could still use his executive powers to secure further funding for the wall. Regardless of what I do, you know, we already have, as you know, a lot of money where we're building existing wall with existing funds. Uh, but I have a lot of options, just like we do with Venezuela, we have on the border. Adding he has options most people don't understand to build the wall without congressional approval. It's going to happen at a really rapid pace. We're giving out contracts right now, and we're going to have a great wall. It's going to be a great, powerful wall. The bipartisan compromise includes just over a billion dollars for 55 miles of new fencing, far below the 5.7 billion for 230 miles Trump shut the government down over in December. I'm extremely disappointed in the amount of money uh, in this compromise. Um, I assume the president's going to sign it. Um, uh, I don't think anybody's interested in having another govern government shutdown, but he has to be frustrated. But questions remain about whether the president could be swayed by conservative backlash. I'm not happy either. Nobody should be happy. The president has every right to be angry. The so-called compromise is typical of the D.C. sewer and swamp, and its level of funding for security and safety of the American people is pathetic. At least one immigration hardliner in the president's corner is framing it as a win for him pointing to remarks made by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi when she said she would only give the president one dollar for his wall. Well, try $1.375 billion. She might not want to call it a wall, but that's what it is. And that's not all bad. Friday is the last day the president can pass and sign the agreement in order to avoid another shutdown. Texas Senator Ted Cruz is proposing a new source of funding for President Trump's border wall between the U.S. and Mexico. Federal prosecutors plan to seek forfeiture judgment for the billions of dollars worth of property recently convicted criminal Joaquin El Chapo Guzman gained from drug trafficking. After Guzman's conviction, Cruz tweeted the money should go toward border security. Texas Republican wrote on Twitter, It's time to pass my El Chapo Act. I urge my Senate colleagues to take swift action on this crucial legislation. The bill has now been referred to the Senate Judiciary Community Committee. A congressman from Illinois has been deployed to the southern border. Representative Adam Kinzinger was sent to the U.S.-Mexico border with his Air National Guard unit just last week. His office says he is serving on active duty in his capacity as Lieutenant Colonel. The Republican congressman was in the Air Force for years before his election to Congress. Kinzinger's offices in Washington and Illinois will remain open during his deployment. Pete Buttigieg would be the first openly gay president in U.S. history if he were elected in 2020. The South Bend, Indiana mayor would also be the first millennial elected to office. He told CNN he plans to use his age to promote his platform in a way other candidates in the 2020 Democratic field cannot.
Well, I think when you run for office at my age, to some extent, your face is your message. And a big part of our message is going to be about generational change. Look, I belong to the generation that was the school shooting generation. I was in uh, high school when Columbine happened. We're the generation that's going to pay the bill for these unaffordable tax cuts for the wealthy. We're the generation that's going to be on the business end of climate change. And I think voters, not only from my generation, but also my parents' and grandparents' generation, want to see the world left in better shape than it is right now. According to the website Ballotpedia, Buttigieg is one of almost 200 Democratic candidates who have filed to run in the 2020 presidential election. Amazon announced it is canceling plans to build its HQ2 in Queens, New York. In a statement, company spokeswoman Jody Seth said, after much thought and deliberation, we've decided not to move forward with our plans to build a headquarters for Amazon in a Long Island city, Queens. The company also said, Opposition from politicians in the area influenced the de decision. It does not plan to reopen the search for HQ2 at this time. Season tickets for UNT football are now on sale. Coming up, we'll tell you how much it costs to reserve your seats at Apogee Stadium. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter. But this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. See on page four that the projections need to be tornado next Thursday. Seriously, Thursday? Can't do that. Uh uh, this is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. The Texas Rangers will play on synthetic turf when they open play at the new Globe Life Field in 2020. The team made a deal with Shaw Sports Turf to provide the synthetic grass field for the retractable roof stadium. I went to Arlington to see how the new turf could affect the players and the game itself. Globe Life Field will be the fourth of 30 stadiums in Major League Baseball to own a turf field. The reason why there are so few is because fans and players typically don't prefer it. Most players specifically say the cons outweigh the pros when it comes to performance and looks. The biggest con to it that I experienced was it being really, if it's hot, being really, really hot. And also, it does take some adjusting if you're not used to playing on turf, like when you're sliding and things like that, because it is different than sliding on, on dirt, for sure. While there is a negative side to a turf field, optimism and trust remain in the organization and their decisions. It's kind of interesting in Texas that they would make that decision for sure. Um, I would be curious to hear what they would have to say. Some of my guesses would be just for the sake of a consistency of not having to have as many field crew, things like that, working on the field. Jamie Reed says the new field is so similar to natural grass that no player or fan will ever recognize its artificial look. Beyond its looks, the players will enjoy the product due to its consistent feel and lower risk for injury. After months of research, the team is confident this is the best decision for everyone, from players to fans to the finance team. I'm very, very confident that this is going to be the best playing artificial surface in baseball. It's going to be the safest playing surface for our players. 
from the fan perspective, it's going to be aesthetically, it's going to look very, very much like a natural field. I'm really confident this is going to be a great product that, quite honestly, no player has ever played on before. Ranger fans can only hope the turf field will be the best decision moving forward. This March marks one year away from the grand opening of the new stadium. Season ticket renewals for the 2019 North Texas football season opened today, and the new price is one of the most affordable options in Conference USA. Season ticket packages start as low as $70, which can save fans up to 50% over the purchase of single game tickets. Following the success of its 2018 season, North Texas plans to build upon the record-breaking year in attendance that saw three of the top 10 crowds in program history, including the best when over 30,000 fans filled Apogee Stadium against Louisiana Tech. The UNT basketball team will wrap up its regular season this week. The team has had its most successful season since the 70s with a current record of 20 and 5. UNT is currently tied at third place in Conference USA, aiming to achieve a record of 21 and 5. The Mean Green will travel to Florida to take on the Florida Atlantic Owls tonight and then will face off against the Florida International Panthers on Saturday. ESPN predicts UNT will win both games. The dangers of dating apps may go over your head on Valentine's Day. Coming up, find out how one woman's experience may cause you to rethink how you use them. So we were walking to school. I started thinking about lunch. Mom pat me turkey and cheese. She's smart. I really want cheese pizza. Sometimes her mind wanders. We should have a sleepover. I remember saying, Laura? I think I heard Laura. mom say something. The sign says don't walk. Sometimes it's so overwhelming. I really hope she doesn't I have really another hope bad I don't day, have another at, school bad day at school today. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. It's a beautiful day out here, sunny today with light breezes, giving way to clouds in the afternoon. We could see some light precipitation to moderate precipitation later on, followed by powerful storm-like conditions. 90 miles per hour winds are expected. According to asking everyone, stay indoors. Come on, that's it, let's go. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, let's crawl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hey yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, let's crawl. Hey yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey yo, let's crawl. Boom. Sometimes recycling can be tricky. If you've ever wondered, am I doing this right? I followed the trail of things you recycle to help you figure it out. Use, reuse, recycle. This three-word motto is memorized by children across America as school districts encourage environmentalism. However, that doesn't mean Denton citizens know what it looks like in practice. In school, they teach you to recycle, but they never tell you much about how to recycle, what exactly is recyclable and what is not recyclable. Recycling is definitely encouraged by the city, but do residents understand how to recycle properly? Aspirational recycling happens quite a bit. For a bottle or other item to be recycled, it should be rinsed out and dried before being taken by the collectors. If you want it to be empty, clean, and dry, those are the main features. Some things need to be kept out of the blue bin completely, such as bags, clothing, wire hangers, and the bottoms of pizza boxes. You can recycle the top of it if it doesn't have the grease, but the bottom part, if it has the grease, it soaks into there. You don't want to recycle that part. If it's on the whole thing, just go ahead and throw it out. Before last June, China used over 45% of the world's recycled materials. Too many shipments contaminated by items like greasy pizza boxes caused China to put limits on recyclables from the Western world. So if there's plastic bags that gets wrapped around and then it melts and then it can catch fire and then that slows down their production because now they have to replace um, machinery and uh, it just, it, it does a lot of damage. To ensure their recyclables do get recycled, Dittonite should remember to keep trash in a bag in the trash can and clean, dried recyclables in a blue bin without a bag. Clothing should be donated, not recycled. Old electronics can be donated to Scrap, a local art supplier. 
For more information on what is and isn't recyclable, visit cityofdenton.com. Dating apps usually help you find someone to spend Valentine's Day with, but multiple women in Nashville would tell you that they had a different experience. Harriet Wallace was, has more on how dating, a dating app scam helped a man steal money and cars instead of hearts. Dominique Robinson is a hard-working mom looking for love. We text all the time. Where you at? Who you at? Have a good day. But apparently in all the wrong places. Oh, he was wonderful. Charming. Charming as a boyfriend. Very charming. And that was the trick. She went fishing and found her love on the dating app, Plenty of Fish. She says it all started out like a dream, romantic dates and kind words. She even introduced her new boyfriend to her family and friends. Then things took a turn. I start seeing the red flags when I start getting inbox from women. Other women saying, I'm his girlfriend. I'm pregnant. I don't know if he's saying they're lying. She says the man she fell for fell for other women too, taking their hearts, their money, and now taking her car, leaving her kids without a way to get around. Each woman saying they met him on other dating sites, at least four other apps, and just like Robinson, promised her the world but took everything. Oh, it, it happens a lot. It, it does. It happens a lot. Robert Young, a former Metro officer and now private investigator, says people using dating apps to scam people is a danger that's showing no sign of slowing down, especially when Valentine's Day rolls around. If you're hiding behind a computer or a cell phone, then you're going to be making up whatever you can make up. Pretty much anything you can type up could be the truth or not the truth. It's fearful. It's very fearful. And I am kind of embarrassed because I have girls and my children got to wash their back. Robinson says she doesn't know if or when her boyfriend will come back or what he'll do. For now, her family and neighbors are keeping watch. Robinson's car was later found abandoned at a Walmart. For now, she's taking a break on dating and focusing on herself. Love might be in the air for some on Valentine's Day, but things are not going well for a pair of bald eagles who have shared a nest in Washington, D.C. for over a decade. Something wasn't right when two eagles in southwest Washington were apart for the first time in 14 years after the male eagle named Justice was nowhere to be found. In his absence, on the day we celebrate love, a new male who is being referred to as Aaron Bird swooped right in. Justice went missing this past Saturday and has yet to be seen. A lot has changed since he went missing. The female eagle, Liberty, has laid her first egg of 2019 and the new guy has been getting comfortable. But there is still hope Justice will return soon. That's our time for now. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time for NT Daily News. From the Mayborn School of Journalism at the University of North Texas, this is NT Daily News.